Hello everyone. I hope everyone is doing fine. This is Mr. Jama, your political science mentor. In this session, we will be discussing about what is democracy and why a democracy is required. So we will be discussing mainly about the meaning of democracy and the features, the major features of democracy. So first of all, let us try to understand what democracy is. Literally, the word democracy has been derived from the Greek words demos and kratos. Demos stands for the word people and kratos stands for the word rule. So, the meaning itself says that democracy is a form of government in which the people rules. That is why the famous American president, the 16th president of the United States of America, Mr. Abraham Lincoln, has clearly defined democracy as the government of the people, by the people, for the people. So, in simple words, we can define democracy as a form of government in which the rulers are elected by the people. So, this is the simplest definition of a democracy. Now, so, since the definition says that the rulers are elected by the people, all governments in which the rulers are elected by the people necessarily, again, does not define or qualify as a democracy. There are some major features required or there are some major features of democracy or which major features which qualifies a democracy. So, the first important feature that, that defines a democracy is, in a democracy, decisions are taken by elected rulers. Yes, decisions are taken by elected rulers. Yes, if we take the example of our neighboring country, Pakistan. In 1999, the Pakistani, Pakistani military leader, General Parvas Mushraf, staged a military coup. And toppled the government or brought down the, the popularly elected government in 1999. He organized a military coup and captured power by force. Now, what is a coup? The word coup has been, has been derived from the French term coup data, which means to forcefully bring down a popular government through the use of force. So, in 1999, Pervez Mushraf staged a military coup in Pakistan and captured power. Then in 2002, he changed his designation from general to president. So he changed his name from president, I mean, uh, from general to president. And after changing his designation from general to president, he conducted a referendum. Yes, what is a referendum? A referendum is a uh, method of voting over an important issue of the state. 
So, a referendum was conducted in 2002 itself, and he meant through the referendum, his term of service as the president was extended by another five years. And so, after extending his rule for another five years, in the year 2002 again, he issued the legal framework order. Yeah. Under this order, through or through this order, the Pakistani constitution was amended and it increased the power of the president and the president was given the power to dismiss the national and provincial government and all the final decisions for making for making the i mean uh, yeah for making any rules resides with the president and uh, with the yeah, with the president. So the president, who was not an elected representative, has more power over the national uh, this one, uh, assembly. So we see that the final decision-making power in, in Pakistan under Pervez Musharraf was not in the hand of the elected representatives. So one very important feature of a democracy is the final decision-making power of the government should reside with the representatives elected by the people. So that is the first point. Then the second point is, in a democracy, there should be free and fair election. So now let us take the examples of, uh, example of some countries again. In China, elections are held after every five years. To the national, uh, the, what is that? To the Chinese Parliament, which is known as the National People's Congress. In Chinese, it is known that uh, it is called the Chen Gao Ren, Chen Gao Ren Dao Yi. And so, in this Chinese Parliament, there are about three thousand members. And this three thousand, okay, so this three thousand members in the in the Chen Gao Ren Min Dai Bo Dao Hui Yi, they. Got, they have the power to elect the president of China. Now, so, the members of the National People's Congress, when they contest the election, they have to, they have to be approved by the, Communist Party, by, the, yeah, by the Communist Party of China. Anyone who whose candidature is not approved by the Communist Party of China cannot contest election. That is why what we see here is that in China, in every election, the government is formed by the Communist Party of China. Then we will, if we take another example, again in Mexico, since its independence in 1930, elections are held after every six years. So since 1930 till the year 2000, the, 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 um, the government was under the control of a single political party known as the PRI. Yes, the PRI, okay, the, PRI the, word, the term PRI stands for, the, okay, it stands for Institutional Revolutionary Party. In Mexican, it is the Partido Revolucionario Institucional. So, this party was in power from 1930 till the year 2000. And, yes, other political parties were also given the opportunity to contest election, but these other political parties never had the chance to win the election. Why? Because the PRI adopted various unfair practices to remain in power government employees it was compulsory for the government employees to attend the uh, the party meetings 
conducted by the PRI. Then teachers in government schools were I mean, uh, yes, used to force the parents of students to vote for the PRI during the election. The media was controlled by the PRI. No news against the party I mean, was allowed to be pub published. And then uh, a large amount of money was spent for the campaign of the members of the PRI. Then when the time for election approaches, polling booths were changed, which confused the voters and which gave advantage to the PRI to vote, I mean, to adopt proxy voting. So these are some methods of election which are not free and fair, which does not give equal opportunity to everyone to contest election so, and to vote. So one important feature of a democracy is that democracy must be based on free and fair election in which even those political parties in power have chance of losing. The third feature is in a democracy, every citizen should have the right to vote. That is, in a democracy, one important requirement is the universal adult franchise. And it is not just the right of voting, but the value of all the votes should be equal. There should be equal value of vote. There are some countries where the right of voting is not guaranteed to all its citizens. You can take the example of Saudi Arabia. In Saudi Arabia, women are not given the right of voting. Then again, we have another country, a, Euro a European country, Estonia, in which citizens of Russian origin are not allowed, or it is very difficult for citizens of Russian origin get uh, to get the right of voting. Then another country is the island nation of Fiji, where the value of <coughs> indigenous Fijians, the value of the vote given by indigenous Fijians are higher than the value, value of votes given by Indian Fijians. So, this is not accepted in a democracy. In a democracy, every citizen should have the right of voting. They should have the same value of vote. And so that is the third point, or that is the third feature of a democracy. Then the, in the fourth feature, in a de democracy, there should be rule of law and respect for the citizen's right. In 1980, Zimbabwe got its independence from the rule of the minority whites. This movement for independence was led by a, an organization known as the Zimbabwe African National Union Patriotic Front. Yes, after its independence from the minority white rulers, the leader of the movement, Robert Mugabe, became the president of yeah, Robert Mugabe became the president of Zimbabwe. But after becoming the president, he adopted he, as the years passed by, he adopted many policies which were undemocratic. The constitution was amended many times through the years, which increased the power of the president. The opposition party were the opposition parties were harassed. Their meetings were disrupted. Then protests and demonstrations against the government was declared illegal. And the Prebke, it was declared illegal to criticize the president. The media was controlled by the, by the government. Even the orders, the judgment declared by the court 
were ignored by the government. So, though the leader was a popularly elected leader, in the process of remaining in power, he became corrupted. This is one feature or this is one yeah, characteristic which is not accepted in a democracy. In a democracy, the rulers should rule within the limits of the constitution. They do not have the freedom to do whatever they wish. And it is the responsibility of the government to respect the rights of the citizens. So we have discussed about three major, okay, uh, from the beginning of the class, we have discussed about the definition of democracy. We have discussed about three, the uh, uh, four features of a democracy. So to wind up, let me go back and uh, let us take a recap. The first point is a democracy is a form of government in which the rulers are elected by the people. All governments with elected rulers necessarily does not have to be a democracy. There are some major features that required to be considered as a democracy. The first important feature is major decisions of the government should be taken by the elected rulers. That is the first feature. Then the, se the second feature is there should be free and fair election in, the, in a democracy in which every political party has the freedom to contest the election. Yeah, then the third feature is the citizens should have the freedom to exercise their franchise or the right of voting and the value of all votes should be equal. And finally, the third, I mean, the fourth point is in a democracy, there is rule of law and respect for the rights of the citizens. In the next session, we will discuss about the merits and demerits of democracy. I hope you have enjoyed the session. Till we meet again in the next session, please take care. Bye-bye.